Hey guys, it is a brand new year. And I hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year's. I know we had a good break, but I think we can all agree that 2021 was a bit shit. It can definitely get in the bin. But we are hoping that 2022 will be a lot better. We're hoping for a banger year. We've got a lot planned. So let's have a talk about what we've got planned for this year. So first up, we have the Superman, our VM Bellina that we bought at the start of all this uh, you know, madness that has overtaken the world. But we paid four grand for it. It only had 117,000 Ks on it, which means it had pretty low Ks for its age. And you definitely couldn't buy it for that now because the prices have gone through the roof. But this piece of ridiculousness is something that happened at the end of last year. We did a little barrel intercooler, like a water to air, cheapy eBay barrel intercooler on it, uh, just to test if it would work. It did work. Then we went with this air to air system to see if that would be any different. It really wasn't. Um, so we definitely wanted to go the barrel setup, but we've done a bit of soul searching over the Christmas break too. And we're thinking, you know, having this big long intake path is not gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, so I've been talking to the people at Mace Engineering. We're going to get one of those little blizzard intercoolers or mini blizzard, they call it. Put that under the blower. That will sit the blower lower. It means we can get the bonnet on it. So we'll set it up with air, air to water with an ice tank in the boot. We'll run it like that. Should be a lot of fun. But the big news is we're going to have the guys at Top Talk put together our 4.2 litre stroker. So we'll have stroker with boost on it. That will be a lot of fun, but by the end of 2022, we're hoping that that 4.2 litre will be turbocharged as well. I know, a lot happening with the Superman this year, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Next up, we have the Trolvo, our great big Swedish box of love. It is a Volvo 240 with a 1JZ in it. That's right, Toyota 1JZ. And we bought it as an unfinished project. We had to do a lot of work to get that working. It has a turbo 400 in it as well. And yeah, it makes really good power and goes really fast. In fact, we started off last year really strongly with a whole bunch of 10 second quarters out of this thing. It runs high tens in the quarter and um, it does it pretty easily, but the axles were not having a good time. So we overnighted some parts from Sweden, got a whole sort of diff upgrade for it, and that took us eight months to put in. But anyway, there was a lot of screwing around, working with other cars and that sort of stuff. But we got the diff in there. We've got a whole new bushes, um, shocks as well. So we did all that, and then we decided to upgrade the top end of the motor. We have camshafts and springs. We went with the, uh, the variable length camshaft, which uh, apparently is not a thing, but uh, we tried it anyway. But now it has complete camshafts into it. It has been retuned. It uh, makes, well, 530 horsepower at the tires, which is uh, pretty good, but we have maxed out the turbo. It has no more to give, but we're gonna run it as is. So we'll take it to Heathcote when the guys are finished doing their uh, wall upgrades they're doing at the moment. We'll take it out there like this, run it. I think it'll run a mid to low 10 pretty easily. And uh, from there, I think uh, we'll upgrade the turbo and go for nines. That is our goal for 2022. Nine second quarters from the trial bow. From there, I'm not sure what our target will be, but let's do that first. Turbo upgrade, nine second quarters, and then we can uh, see what's possible.
And the next cab off the rank is actually a cab, or it was, yes. This was a genuine Melbourne cab, 600,000 k's on the clock. It is the OG Carnage car, turbo taxi. Yes, what a beast. And the bane of our existence. I tell you what, we've had some ups and downs with this car. We paid, what, 2750 for it, so 2750 bucks for it, way, way back. I actually wonder what it's worth now because the prices of FG Falcons now are through the roof. They are sky high, but anyway, it is an X-Taxi. And our plan was to run tens on LPG. <sighs> to make that happen, we have been through a couple motors and a couple gearboxes, and we've changed the diff, so it's got an entirely different drive line in it. It's got an upgraded tail shaft, it's got an upgraded transmission, it's got Preston's automatics that have done the engine. We've got a fresh green top in there. And yeah, so fresh motor, 600,000 Ks. It has run 11.0 on LPG. <sighs> Just needs a fresh engine. Yep, you heard me right. <laughs> so we put a fresh engine in this thing and we put on the dyno and it made great power. 620 horsepower at the tyres. That's right, this is one of the most powerful cars we have. Um, however, you know, and everything was fine. Driving around, well, I think it's broken a ringland. It's just one of those things. We are asking a lot of the pistons in this thing. They are standard. It is a standard green top. I mean, obviously, it's got valve springs, oil pump gears, that sort of stuff. But standard rods, pistons, crank, valves, all that sort of stuff. It is a green top. And we're asking too much of it, I think, on LPG. LPG is a very harsh fuel. Like, yes, it has octane, but it's not fun to tune and uh, you know hey if it was easy everyone would be doing it so given that it is um, well probably heard a piston we're pretty confident we're thinking we're going to finally go rods and pistons in this thing we're just kind of sick at throwing green tops at it I think this is like it's fourth maybe and I think it needs to go rods and pistons just give us that margin of uh, you know safety factor so we can go out there and finally run a 10 with this thing. 11.00 is not a 10. It's very, very close, but it is not a 10. And we definitely want to run that 10. And once we run 10s on LPG, I think we're going to just rip the LPG system out of it and fucking put E85 in it because it is a nightmare. I've got to say, LPG is a nightmare. There it is. If you're thinking about doing LPG, Turbo, Falcon, don't. Just don't. All right? Learn from our experience. Don't do it. Just watch this car and love it. It is awesome. Turbo Taxi is awesome. It's a great street car, but it really has uh, challenged us, I've got to say. So, rods and pistons for you, my dear. And I think we'll uh, get the boys at Dandy Engines to uh, do us some machining on its OG engine. We're going to take the engine that had the bottom end knock in it when we first bought it, and we're going to build that engine up with rods and pistons, put in a taxi, go and run tens. I know I'm sick of saying it, it's going to run tens, but it is, it's going to run tens, I promise. It will. 2022 will be the year Turbo Taxi runs tens. It also needs a new battery. Check it out. We call him Mr. Truffy. not on fire. And then we have our Toyota Lexan. If it's looking a bit filthy, that's because it's my daily at the moment. That's right, I am driving this to and from work every day. Uh, I had to hand the D-Max back, at the, you know, because 2021 is finished, all the 2021 cars had to go back, and I haven't got anything for 2022 yet. So 
Hopefully we'll have something on that front, but the Lexan has been excellent transport. Uh, we found out the odometer doesn't actually work, so the odometer says 340 something thousand Ks and doesn't work, so who knows how many Ks are on this thing. But it's reliable, the aircon works, drives to and from work pretty good. We have had to do a couple of things. We had to uh, replace rear brakes. We had to put a tar shaft in it because the center bearing was flogged out. Uh, a few things like that. At the moment, it's running the, uh, the VN wheels on the back because we had two flats in like the space of a week. So anyway, yeah. But when this finally stops being my daily, we're going to put a Lexus V8 in it. That's right, Toyota V8 in a Toyota station wagon, making basically a V8 Commodore that's not a V8 Commodore. And not only are we doing that, you know, putting a four litre V8 in the front, we're going to turbocharge it as well. E85, make it into a bit of a drag challenged sleeper. Yes. We've got the engine, it's sitting in that car over there. We'll show you that shortly. And we've even got some goodies over here to show you. So I had to talk to the boys at Golby's and apparently with uh, Skid Factory, they have come up with this beauty. Ugh. It's a manifold top for the 1UZ, basically like a Holly high ram top with like an adapter there to go on the 1UZ. Uh, we've got a throttle body there and idle control motor and all the gear there as well. So Golby's have done us a bit of a deal on that which is fantastic. We've also got a whole bunch of Howtech gear as well. So we've got a dash, we've got an ECU, we've got all the stuff. Uh, basically ready to go, sensors, everything. So there's an Elite 2500 to go in there. IC7 dash. Uh, what's this? That's the wideband controller, so dual wideband controller, so WB2. Whole bunch of sensors, everything to do that. So yeah, that's gonna happen. But yeah, I've got to stop driving it first. And well, like I said, it's the daily. And this is the Sora. It is a beaten up piece of crap. Our mate James gave this car to us because, well, basically his sister uses a dr daily driver for a lot of years and it got hull damage and they used it as a paddock basher for a while. They even tore out one of the air lines and so it's the air suspension's all kaput and it is slammed on the deck. But we don't care about any of that stuff. We care about what's under the bonnet. There it is. 1UZ in all its glory. Of course, like all our cars, battery is stuffed. So ugh, let's get our world's heaviest jump pack and whack that on. Purrs like a kitten. You gotta love that Toyota engineering, I gotta say. It's funny, we got contacted by a guy, he's like, oh, if all you're gonna do is take the engine box out of it, you know, what are you doing with the shell? And I'm like, it is beaten up, it's a piece of crap, you don't want the shell. Oh, I'd like to come and have a look and make an offer on it. He came and had a look and went, this is a piece of crap. I'm like, I did, t did say, yeah. Yep, she rough. But like I said, all we care about is what's under there. Then we have Lightning McBarra, our little MX-5. This thing started off life as a, well, let's face it, a little bit of a joke car we built to take to Red Center Nats. Uh, they said, you could take anything to Red Center Nats. So we went, all right, let's get, you know, tiny little car and stick an LS in there with two turbos hanging out of the bonnet. And when we got up there, they were like, okay, this is the new limit of what you can drive around on the street up here in Alice Springs. So that was a lot of fun. It was a hell of a build, I gotta say. Uh, from when we got it back from all race, they did the cage and the tubs and that sort of thing and the engine plate. We got it back with no engine, no box, no fuel system, nothing in it. And from that point, we had 12 days to get it ready for Red Center Nats and we made it. 
it was the most insane build we have ever done and that was crazy. And then we discovered, you know, after the hoo-ha died down after about six months, no one really cared about a twin turbo LS in a Mazda anymore. So we went, well, if no one cares about LSs anymore, let's stick a Barra in it. And that got people excited because, you know, pulling an LS engine out and sticking a Barra in something, well, that's gonna, uh, yeah, get some people fired up. And it fits in there, well, pretty well. Well, sort of. It is a lot of engine, there's no doubt. We've got a plasma man intake, we've got a, uh, eBay intercooler on there. We had a turbo on it, same turbo as what's on the trial bow at the moment, and we found out we were running out of top end, kind of at the same power level that the trial bow is running out of top end as well. So now we have a Pulsar turbo on it, but we have never run the engine with this turbo because we used to have the pipes coming up through the bonnet. And um, a few of the, you know, the drag racing associations like Andrew and IHRA are not particularly fond of that. So they asked us to move the dump pipe down and that's what we've done. So now the dump pipe and the wastegate merge together and come down up under the guard. It has a whole new tubular front subframe in it, which you really can't see from up here, but we had to do that so to create the room for the dump pipe to go down. Otherwise there was no room, no room at all. <sighs> to do that though, we also had to cut some brake lines. So now we have to redo our hard lines for the front brakes. Uh, once we do that, wheel alignment, and then, well, this thing's ready to go back on the dyno, and then hopefully the track. That's what I want to do. I want to take this out of the track, run nines with a barrier in it, and then I've got to say after that, she's pretty much done. At that point, I think we may sell it. That's right, we may sell something. Crazy, I know, but yeah, whether we sell it as a roller or whether we sell it as a, you know, complete car, we haven't decided, but I think you may see this for sale sometime in 2022, but before then, it'll run nines. We wanna make this, well, the quickest car in the fleet, it already is, it ran nines with a twin turbo LS in it, 997, but uh, I think we can run nines with a barrow in it, That'll be a lot of fun. And then, well, we'll see. It'll be a competition. Which one's going to be quicker? Will the Mazda be quicker or Trollbo be quicker? Hmm. It's going to be interesting to see. Then there's Mr. Dodgy. That's right, I wanna bring Mr. Dodgy back in 2022. <sighs> you know this thing's gonna be 59 years old this year? Crazy, isn't it? So Mr. Dodgy is a car that we found very sad and forlorn looking at auction. We paid $1,450 for it, which uh, was a bit of a bargain when you think, you know, like it's rust-free car over 50 years old, you know, for 1,450 bucks. That's not doing too bad. Original push button auto car. It is a Dodge Phoenix. It is so ugly, it's cool. I mean, look at that grill. It's just amazing, you know. These were a muscle car back in the day. This, these harken back to the start of the muscle car era, like the early 60s, back when they had, you know, the Max Wedge cars and the first Hemi cars. You know, that's, they were putting them in these, mainly two doors, but still, these were the body style that those original muscle cars were based off. So, very cool. Uh, we put a 440 in it. Turns out it was a fairly low compression motorhome 440. It only made 216 horsepower at the rear wheels on the dyno, so that was a little bit sad. Uh, we took it the drags, it ran 15.2, but that was mainly because it wouldn't shift into top gear. We had some issues there, so. I want to redo the 440 with higher compression, maybe some more cubes, we'll see. See what I can convince Tolf to give me the money for, but yeah, let's get a 440 back into this thing. We know it fits, we know we have all the gear to make it work. 
We even put some aluminium heads on the old 440 and a camshaft and that's where it all come wrong. Because I did the, uh, the camshaft and the heads at MotorX in front of a whole bunch of people, kind of got rushed towards the end and I forgot to tip in the zinc additive for the camshaft and of course it ate the camshaft on startup. Which was, uh, you know, very distressing because you yeah, basically put metal through the entire motor. Yeah, so that motor needs an entire rebuild. But we do have now aluminium heads for it. We could probably put a decent cam in it. I'd love to put like even just a baby roller in it. You know, a street roller would be great. Uh, if we put a couple grand into an engine, we'll get the engine in there and it will be something spectacular, I think, because, you know, spend a couple grand on one of those 440s and it's not hard to get 500 horsepower out of them. So, yeah. And that would turn this into a bit of a fire breather. Once we do that though, well, I don't know. I want to uh, hand it off to Ryan Ford and get him to do a more race inspired, you know, period correct paint job on it. You know, give it something a bit of, you know, flashier, not get away, not, you know, remove the entire patina, but you know, let's do, do something that combines the patina with kind of a race car look. And um, once that's done, you know what, maybe we'll sell it because um, it is such a cool car and I do love it, but it takes up a lot of room in the workshop. So let's get it going. Let's have some fun with it and then let's um, push it out the door and let someone else enjoy it. I think it'll be a pretty good thing. So Mr. Dodgy, I want to see him come back. I want to see him have some fun. I want to see someone else have some fun with Mr. Dodgy. He is such a cool cruiser. It's unbelievable. Go back and watch the videos if you haven't seen them already. And another car that we worked on a lot last year was a Dad Ute. It was probably the star of 2021 for us. It started off as a five week project, turned into a five month project thanks to the uh, Delta Wave. But also there was rust repairs and chassis repairs and brake systems and all sorts of stuff. But it made good power, sounds fantastic. And um, yeah, I was pretty happy with it, how it came out. But that is going home. Um, I'll probably race it at the Mopar Nationals in February at Heathcote Park. But other than that, you're probably not going to see a lot of it this year. But we do have something new and we picked it up during 2021. And none of you have seen it. We haven't told anyone about it. It is a, well, totally new project, but uh, we're going to have to ask past Scotty what we bought. So, past Scotty, what did we buy? We bought a Tirana. That's right, we've bought a Tirana, and it even has two doors. But yes, it's a four cylinder. Yes. Four cylinder LJ, actually known as a TA Tirana. It even has the motor and box in it. Let's have a look. Whoa. So you're looking at the most expensive car we have ever bought for Carnage. I know that's not saying a lot. I mean, taxi cost us, what, 2,700? MX-5 cost us 1,700. The VN cost us four grand, and that was our previous most expensive car. Well, this one costs a little bit more than that because Holden Tiranas and ones with two doors are very expensive these days. But this will be a cool little beast when we work out what we're gonna do with it. So our little Tirana has a very good body. It only has a couple little pieces of rust, some here in the rear window, some in the floor, some in the firewall, so not much at all, and all very easy to repair. In fact, rear spares make a patch panel for there and the floor, and the firewall's just a flat piece of metal, so it's gonna be very simple to fix. Engine choices, well, we can put just about anything in this, and it will be 100% cooler than that little four cylinder, so. Once we decide what that's going to be, we'll let you know. But in the meantime, like I said, it is a two-door Tirana and very cool. What should we do with it? 
So I reckon that's going to keep us plenty busy for 2022. We've also got Broads' Tirana there in the background, but that's not our problem. That is Broads' problem. He's building a new 5 litre for it, so it's going to be 5 litre with a Harrop blower on it. Uh, like it was before, but stronger bottom end, and that should be pretty awesome. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing it, but look forward to not working on it either, because we've got a lot to do. It's going to be a very big year, and I think we're going to see you on many episodes, many future episodes of Carnage.